Okay, I want to introduce Jeanette Washington. She's been patiently waiting. We had a little um, glitch where I moved the, the time. So she's here. She is a licensed pathologist based in Detroit, Michigan. Jeanette has provided service as a speech pathologist, software engineer, and an educator. She has written a book called Technical Difficulties, Why Dyslexic Narratives Matter in Tech. So she has a real love for combining technology and speech pathology and has been so helpful for us at Smiles for Speech, um, just really trying to catch that curve of technology. Jeanette has been you know, right there by my side trying to help <laughs> and all of us <laughs> on the team are learning from Jeanette. She currently works with the Microsoft Corporation to close the tech opportunity gap. So she's going to talk to us. Let's tech about it. Low tech and no tech ideas for language enrichment. All right. Hello, hello, hello. It is so nice to be here with you all um, this evening for you and afternoon for me. Um, I'm delighted to share some more insight. I know we've got a lot of information that we've already covered from our amazing panelists. So go ahead and give them a hand if you can. I mean, I learned things that I didn't even know I needed to learn, but <laughs> here I am. So um, big shout outs to them and to everyone that's visiting our um, virtual workshop from all over the world. Thank you for being here. We are doing this because of you. So um, your insight is very important. It's so essential to us. And I know I've put it in the chat a couple times, but if you have additional questions and we can't answer them while we're live, go ahead and send them to sfsvirtual at smilesforspeech.org. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you all so we can get started talking about um, some no tech and low tech ideas. Um, it's kind of gonna tie into what we've discussed um, throughout the presentation. So we all are kind of building up on the different um, scopes of learning here. So let's get this pulled up here. All right. So Nothing. as we start, let's see. Should everybody see? Give me a thumbs up. I see a lot of waves in the chat. Give me a thumbs up if you can um, see the slides here and we'll get started. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So again, my um, title for my talk today is Let's Tech About It, play on the word tech, uh, low tech and no tech ideas for language development. So who am I and why am I qualified to even give you all this talk? Um, Sandy gave a very uh, eloquent uh, introduction for myself, but I wanted to tell you all a little bit more about um, who I am and what I do. So I've worked as a speech pathologist um, and as a software engineer, as well as a dyslexia advocate. Um, I currently own a diversity and inclusion company called Barely Articulating. And in conjunction with that, I work for Microsoft Corporation and I help close the tech gap. Because as you know, a lot of individuals with autism or with dyslexia or with ADHD, they find um, challenges as they transition into the workforce. So they're not always able to find those jobs that they're qualified for. So I help close that opportunity gap for them. Um, in addition, I wrote a book called Technical Difficulties, Why Dyslexic Narratives Matter in Tech. And in that book, I address a few more um, specific uh, tactics or techniques that are helpful for people with special abilities and how they can use those special abilities to really be um, a unique qualified employee or employer in some sense. All right, so our expectations for my talk today, um, we will discuss language enrichment activities. Um, we'll assemble some commonly used tools for uncommon approaches. And finally, I'll empower you all through creativity and through repurposing. So Africa has the world's oldest record of human technology, but the internet penetration is significantly lower in, um, than the global average in Africa. So how's the internet connection in your community? Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you're using um, a cell phone to access this uh, 
this webinar, this um, virtual workshop, or give me a thumbs down if it's not really, really great in your community. You can also give me a one plus if it is great in your community or a one minus or minus one if it's not. So I'm seeing a lot of one pluses and um, thumbs up. So that's awesome. I know that's a typical stereotype that in um, you know African countries, they don't have uh, access to technology that is um, you know relevant or that is going to revolutionize our world. So it's good to see that a lot of you do have great internet connectivity, um, though some of you are saying that mm, it could be a little better. All right, so we know that technology can never replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformative. And I'm calling you all teachers, but you could be parents, you could be principals, you can be business owners, um, you can be um, you know, tutors, you can be any of those things, but we all know that we have a common goal in mind, and that is to create some great communicators. Because as you can imagine, our, our students, our um, children, they're going to inhabit this world. And right now, this world is, is really struggling through some different pandemics. As you've seen in the U.S., we've had um, a racial pandemic that has been um, unfolding for the last 400 years. And we've also seen COVID-19 come and just wipe things away. So some no tech items that I want you all to consider when you're creating lessons and you're really looking into ways where you can create those communicators, let's look at pencil grips and post-it notes and um, slanted surfaces, uh, raised line paper, cover overlays. I know those can be helpful for those who exhibit dyslexia. Tactile letters, which um, are helpful for multi-sensory learning, which we'll learn a little bit about later on. Um, buzzers, portable word processors, talking calculators, um, switches, buzzers. I've even seen people use um, like a portable door, uh, like a door ringer <laughs> in their classrooms to help transition from different activity to the next activity so that um, they're communicating those goals with their children and using those gestures. So technology is the, essentially, it's the pen and paper of our time. It's the lens in which we experience much of the world. Within low tech and no tech communities, technology may be um, restrictive. So experimenting, growing, taking risks, making mistakes, and ultimately having fun is what's going to set your therapy sessions or your classroom sessions apart from any other session that exists. So it doesn't matter if you're in India, doesn't matter if you're in Portugal, doesn't matter if you are in Ghana, your creativity is going to really help your children soar. Whether they're your actual children or they're children you're teaching, your creativity, your imagination is going to really help them to see the world in, um, in a way that is, um, you know, non-parallel to anyone. All right, so let's talk about some apps that we use on our phone that we currently have now probably installed on our phones, but um, we're using them just to communicate with our friends. How can we repurpose WhatsApp and Facebook so that it can serve us as we serve our population? So I have a couple things here um, for WhatsApp. You can obviously use WhatsApp to contact parents, interact with colleagues, record and send audio lessons, share video lessons, and you can use graphics. Now, you can use this with your students, or you can simply use this with your colleagues, or you can use it with parents to keep them in the loop. Because we want our parents to be very privy about the, the different goals and milestones that we've set for the students. And we also want them to know when they've reached that milestone. Um, again, we have another app that we probably have downloaded on our phone, um, Facebook, and we're not really using it for its full capacity. So you can use Facebook to assemble parent groups. Um, we have a community group, Smiles for Speech, or SFS Virtual, so make sure you search for that when you have an opportunity. Um, we can connect with professionals globally. Like right now, I'm talking to you all from Detroit, Michigan in the U.S., and I know there are a lot of you from all over the world and we're connecting and we're all professionals or we want to gain a certain level of professionalism. So we're here. You can create groups, 
um, create events, upload files, and you can facilitate polls. So those last two are going to be very important um, when we are uploading maybe some worksheets, um, some books as we saw earlier. We saw Amanda um, from Panda Speech bring in um, a book that was translated in Swahili. So uploading files like that can be so helpful. Those can truly set the tone. Um, in addition, we can use polls. We can facilitate polls. So ask your parents, ask your colleagues, ask other professionals what's working, what's not working for them. All right, next. So no tech. All right, so we learned about some of these um, today while we were communicating with uh, the panelists earlier. So we learned about parallel talk, um, I think we learned about sabotage, which I don't have here. However, I want to kind of expound on some of those. So here I have a couple different pictures to illustrate what I mean. And I'll start randomly over here with verbal routines. Um, verbal routines are extraordinarily helpful for small children. And I've found that they're helpful for adults as well. You want to be able to have those conversations about what is happening next. What are we going to be doing now? And for them to also be able to reciprocate the same things. Using visuals to help with those verbal routines um, is a game changer. As you see the classroom teacher here, she it looks like she's in her morning routine where she's kind of going over the days of the week. She's going over probably the months of the year, the weather, all of those things are helpful in creating a language rich environment. And essentially that's what you wanna do. You wanna expose children to more language, all right? So we wanna increase the opportunities. So we wanna target the same words and sounds all day. One of the panelists before said it takes 250 instances for a child to recall that word or for them to kind of restore it in their repertoire. So we want to use different ways to target those same sounds. Here you see someone using a keyboard duster, which I have, um, and you also see a little placards with words on it. So they're practicing their keyboarding skills. They're also able to identify those different letters. And then maybe after that, the teacher or the speech and language pathologist may have them write that out. So we wanna target the same sounds all day along with the same words rather. So if the word of the week is, or the word of the day is banana, we wanna be putting banana on our duster. We wanna possibly put it on our fridge parents. We wanna put it all over. So they'll constantly get that exposure. And again, as you may have guessed it, it's exposing them to that language rich environment. Next, we have multi-sensory play. Multi-sensory play is basically um, when you engage different senses. We have our hearing, our smelling, our seeing, our tasting. We want to engage all those senses um, when we're teaching these different words or these different sounds. For instance, um, if we're gonna do banana again, let's, we're gonna go back on that word, <laughs> or we're gonna be in the kitchen, let's cook with the banana, let's cut the banana, you know, let's taste the banana. We have clay here for the word, look, someone took a, a Lego and kind of mocked that word, look. All right, so parallel talk, we talked a little bit about that. Basically talking aloud about what your child is doing. Singing, um, when I was in graduate school, I actually did some research on how singing um, different songs was helpful for children to retain that information. When you're singing those colors, or you're singing the alphabet, or you're singing about different words, they're retaining that information. And like, you guessed it, this is exposing them to a language rich environment. Visuals is something I don't have to really expound on too deeply because I know you all understand that by showing them visuals, having that banana that they can look at, that they can touch, or having it on one of those uh, pecs or communication boards and they can tap banana, that is going to be helpful with giving them that exposure, that enrichment, and that engagement. So finally, let's tech about it next steps. So we want to provide next steps for you all so that once you leave here, you're not just, um, you know, you didn't just experience a sitting yet. I've gone to presentations where I just sat there, I got all the information, and then afterwards I was like, okay, 
what do I do next? So I'm going to um, <laughs> invite you all to go ahead and massage your brains so we can make sure all of that information got in there. All right. Good. Are the panelists, are you all massaging your brains? Excellent. All right. So our next steps first, we want to learn what works best for our learners. So with that, we'll have a lot of trial and error. All of the information we gave you today may or may not be helpful to your specific learner, but it's all about trial and error. And that's what really turns the dial with creativity. You want to show up for your students. They are counting on you. They're counting on your imagination. They're counting on your creativity. They're counting on your ingenuity to create different lessons or activities that will really stretch their scope of understanding those words, those sounds, and everything else that you may be teaching them at the time. And finally, we want to be the change that we see. We want to be the change um, that really sets the tone for how our children learn, okay? We wanna advocate for them. So with advocating, they're seeing how much we care about their learning. So essentially it'll trickle down to them and they'll understand we care so they should make a better effort or they should really invest themselves in learning. All right, so though low tech and no tech tools may seem limiting, what counts the most is your willingness to think outside of the box. So has your opinion on low tech and no tech tools changed? Go ahead and pop in the chat, give me a thumbs up. If you're excited about going out there and trying some of these tools, um, some of these low tech or no tech tools, give me a thumbs down if you're still kind of waddling the fence, you don't know for sure if these will work for you yet. All right. Thank you so much for attending my session on Let's Tech About It. If you all have any technical questions, drop them in the comments, um, or you can definitely go to SFS virtual at smilesforspeech.org and let us know the questions you have. We will try our very best to get them answered. All right.